121st division of the Psalms, they call it. And uh, Psalms means a song. That's what a psalm is. It's a song. And so you'll pay attention this morning just for a few minutes, and I will read some scripture. I preached on this subject years ago, and I'd like to bring uh, some of it back to your remembrance this morning. And if you'll listen, Psalm 121, David had a lot of trouble. And uh, the writer of the Psalms here is having problems. And he knew what to do when he was having problems. Do you? He knew where to look when times were hard. Look what he said, verse one, Psalm 121, 1. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I'm going to stop right there. David, he said here, he said, when I need help, I know where to look. I'm going to look up there and the Lord is going to help me. Now, our generation don't see it that way. So I'm going to preach this morning on the subject, the generation that won't look up. The generation that won't look up. The Bible tells us that when you're in trouble, which way we're supposed to look up. Our generation, we have been trained and taught that we'll, we're all we are. There ain't nothing out there but outer space. There ain't nobody up there. So all we can do is look down here and try to figure out an answer to the problems that we have. I'll tell you what got me to thinking about this. I was somewhere, I'm traveling somewhere, I was in the airport, and in the airport there are literally, literally, thousands and th- 10,000 of people in, in a big airport, especially, uh, well, Charlotte's big, but I mean, not, it ain't nothing like Atlanta, uh, the busiest airport in the world now. And you, you go down there and you, you uh, see people. And they have in these little, their little, little rooms or whatever, about as big as this auditorium here, uh, terminals and place where you sit and wait on your flight. And there's a lot of people sitting in there, and there's luggage, and there's one guy over here asleep, another guy over here. And I got to noticing, uh, when I walked in there, I couldn't even get through the aisle, and everybody in there was looking down. I mean everybody. I'd, I'd done a little survey. I counted, and I counted out of 20 people, I think 18 of them were looking at their phone. 18 out of 20. And you know, uh, you're trying to get in, uh, excuse me, excuse me. They not only can't see you, they can't hear you. They got stuff in their ear, they got plugs in their ears. They're totally uh, oblivious to everything that's going on. Uh, excuse me, sir, and they just keep looking at it. Excuse me, sir. Uh, hey, buddy, <laughs> will you let me in? And, and it, it, you almost feel like you're intruding. And I got on the airplane, it was the same way. Everybody on the plane was looking down. And one was doing like this, and another one was doing like this, and another one was doing like this, and another one was doing like this, and and everybody on it. And I thought, you know, that's every, almost everybody in it. Check it out in a restaurant. You can't even have a family conversation going out there with your family no more, can you? Because there are your kids sitting in there. You'll be just talking away, and look, they ain't heard one word you say. And they say, oh, I heard you, I heard you. They're lying. I, I, they're in, uh, I mean, it's, we're in the generation that uh, just looks down, looks down. If you don't believe me, check it out. I mean, how many wrecks are they on the highway every day? Uh, uh, some girl going down through there, or boy, don't get mad at me, uh, uh, texting while on the phone, blam, runs right into the back of somebody, or runs off the road and hits two or three mailboxes, or, or cleans out the ditch because of looking down, looking down. It's not just the phones and the devices. It went in laboratories this morning uh, that the CDC and everywhere in the world, you know what they're doing? They're trying to solve problems. They're try- everybody talking about the flu? Everybody talking about the flu being so bad? And they said, when we, we make a vaccine for the flu, it changes and mutates, and that vaccine don't work. And by before the season's over, it's done change. We'll, we'll run this experiment, run this experiment, run this experiment. Looking down. Looking down for the answer. Uh, people have marriage trouble. Uh, looking down, what are we going to do? Let's go to a counselor. 
Let's go to a nightclub and get drunk and maybe party a little bit and maybe that'll help our marriage. Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, you're going to get some help there. Uh, that's for sure. Looking down, looking down, looking down with a needle, looking down with a, with a, uh, a bottle, looking down, looking down, read a book, looking down. David said, when I have problems, I look up. We're living in a generation that will not look up. Now, I want to say a few things about it this morning quickly. Now, I want to say, first of all, we ought to look up for our food, for our food. Did you know that God, you, every, every bite of food you put in your mouth comes from up there? And you say, no, it don't. It comes from Walmart. Gross. No, no. Uh, it, uh, if, you eat, if you eat green beans today, uh, uh, today sometimes some farmer planted them beans in the ground and God in heaven made that thing grow. And wheat, if you eat a piece of bread today, God in heaven made that wheat grow and gave you that bread. If you eat a piece of meat, God, let that cow or that possum, the other white meat, uh, grow. Uh, if, if you eat a piece of bacon today, I got down on some of you's level out there, didn't I? Uh, 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 listen, if, if you eat a piece of bacon today, God, uh, let that old pig grow and grow that everything you get. It, in, and, and I'm telling you, it all comes from God. They said that one time there's this little old boy, uh, and he's, he's staying with some people, and, uh, and they didn't pray. And uh, he's looked down, he couldn't believe it, they didn't even pray. He said, and he said, why don't y'all ask the blessing? And they just started eating like that, and he said, you're just like my dog, you don't even look up. Uh, to see where it come from. You know, you throw it down to a dog, he just starts eating it. But you know what we ought to do? Before we eat a bite, we ought to say, Lord, thank you for this food. Listen, there's a lot of people in the world ain't got it. One third of the world, one third of the world uh, today eats with a spoon and a fork like we do. One third eat with chopsticks and the other third eat with their fingers. And a large portion of that part of the world have no food whatsoever. We throw away in this country enough food to feed some other countries. I'm telling you, God has been good to us and we ought to look up and thank him for our food. Amen? I mean, there's some people in bad shape, but uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it's not, I, was thinking, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, I was down in Gastonia not too long ago and um, and I, I've told you this before, part of it, but I was at, the, at a restaurant, and his restaurant is right off the exit. I'll tell you where it's at. It's at that, if you've ever seen that uh, Cox Road in, in Gastonia, and there's an IHOP right there beside it, right beside the interstate. And I had my uh, forerunner pulled up right to the edge there, and there's this concrete block wall straight down about as high as, I don't know, about as high as that speaker down like that. And then there's little some woods, and those an exit ramp. Well, I happened to look down there, and there was some people. I thought, oh, my goodness, there's homeless people down there. You know how they'll get between, between a, a restaurant or something and the interstate, just some woods, a little wooded area about half as big as this right in here. And I looked in there, and I seen some people. I saw, I saw like a tarp hanging up, and I saw sheets, and I saw, then I saw some people moving around. I thought, Lord, have mercy. Them be, and my heart just broke for them. Y'all know I've got a heart for, for people, especially drunks like that. I just, it just kills me. I can't stand it. So I got some tracks or something, got out of my car, and I looked down there, and I jumped off of that, that wall, and I, I thought I'd kill myself, and I, and I landed down there in them woods like that, and I started walking towards them uh, like this, and I thought, I'm going to witness these people. I can't stand thoughts of them being out here uh, with not, no, nothing to eat, nothing like that, and there's liquor bottles laying everywhere and all of that, and, they, and, and when they saw me, I, I guess they thought I was some kind of a cop or, or something like that. They looked at me like that, like, hoo, hoo. and there was uh, three or four guys and one old straggly-haired old, old girl there, and, and uh, they looked at me, and I said, hold, 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 hold. I ain't going to hurt you. Uh, I ain't no cop. And they looked at me like this, like, who are you? What do you want? They, they knew I was different than them, and I said, uh, don't worry, I'm a preacher. And they said, oh, okay. And, and one of them looked and said, what kind of preacher are you? 
I said, I'm a Baptist preacher. They said, okay, that's what we are. We're all Baptists. That's, a, that's what I figured. That's what I figured. It's like at one time, like that one guy said, uh, he, he, a preacher hadn't seen him. Uh, he, he come up and he was drunk and he told the preacher, he said, you remember me, don't you? You saved me one time. He said, you look like one I saved. Uh, if the Lord saved you, maybe you'd have done a little better. But anyway, them guys, they said, uh, you're a Baptist preacher? And I said, yeah, and you know the Lord loves y'all. And he cares about you. And I mean, his car's whizzing down through there. I never even thought, really, I never even thought, oh, there's a lot of people in Gastonia know me. A lot. I mean, all churches down there everywhere. And I get letters and phone calls from down in that area. And after I'd done witness to them and left, I thought, I said, you know, the Lord loves y'all. And I, my, my heart broke for them people. I, you say, well, they got their something. Maybe they did. But I still can't feel still sorry for them. And after I left, I thought, not, I can imagine it going to some church. Yep, it was him. I saw him. He's down there with a bunch of drunks. I know it was him. I've seen him uh, right there. And I thought, uh, Lord, but you know, that ain't, that, I thought that ain't no big deal. They accused Jesus of eating with publicans and sinners, so I didn't worry about that. And I thought, people, you don't have to live like this. You don't have to stay this way. God's good. The Lord, if you'll look to the Lord, he'll help you. If you'll look up, he'll help you. And let me tell you this morning, people, I don't care what your problem is. If you'll look up, there's help from the hills up there. There's help from on high. They, you're not wasting your time when you're praying. You're not wasting your time. When you get down on your knees and you say, Lord, I'm looking up. I'm looking up. You say, preacher, I don't know if I can pay my bills. I don't know if I can make ends meet this week. Week. I don't know how I'm going to make it. i tell you what you do. Look up for your food. Look up for your food. I mean, brother, we're, we've got so much in this country, we forget where it comes from. It all comes from up there. Don't ever forget that. Number two, let me say, uh, we, I, we're living in a generation that won't look up for its fortune. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 8, 18, it is God that gives you power to get wealth. It is God who gives you the ability to make money. God gives you that. It is a gift. The Bible said to, his, to his Old Testament Jews, Deuteronomy 8, 18, he gives you power to get wealth. That means every dime you make, God gives you the strength and ability and the smarts to make that money. Don't forget that. We better look up for our fortune. You better remember where it comes from. That's why we passed them offering plates a while ago. I took my money out. I got paid this, this past Sunday. I go to the bank on Monday. I get my check cash. I put my offering ties in my wallet, and I put them in here on Sunday morning. You know why? Because I'm looking up for what God gave me, and I, don't, I appreciate what God's given me. Did you know everybody in here this morning is a rich person? You know there ain't no poor people in here today? I mean, if you, by world standards, everybody in this room is rich. If you've got more than one dress or one pair of pants or one, uh, you eat more than one time yesterday, you are a rich person compared to this world. And we better look up for our fortune. We better look up for our, our means of making a living. Don't you ever think, well, I made this money, it's what's all mine. I'm gonna, don't hog it like that. Don't be hoggish. That's why the Bible said in the Old Testament when they, when they plowed their fields, their fields were square and they'd come around there and they'd plow them like that and the Lord said, leave them corners. Leave them corners. Leave them corners for the poor and people that don't have much. We better learn how to look up for our fortune, ladies and gentlemen. Look up for your fortune. It is him that gives you power to get wealth. It's him that makes you feel like getting up, going to work in the morning, that makes your brain work so you can make money on deals. It's God that gives that to you. God's given that to you. You ought to thank him for that. Look up for your fortune. Number three. We ought to look up for our families. Look up for our family. Never before has a family been in such a mess as it is today. I've never met more people having marriage problems. You know what? We've got more stuff. We've got more money. We've got nicer cars, nicer clothes, nicer houses and everything, and less peace in our homes than we've ever had before. Now, you know what that means? Stuff don't make you happy. Stuff don't make you happy. It don't matter if you're driving down the road in a solid gold Cadillac 
if you're fussing and fighting and arguing and the devil's in the car and the kids are smart mouthing the parents and their mom and daddy's are fussing and they're living like the devil and getting the divorce and tearing the family all to pieces, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, look up. Hey, some of you might have forgot this, but if you're having any trouble in your marriage at all, if you're having any kind of problems at home, in your home, I'm telling you where the answer is. It's not in a, in a, in a big screen TV. It is not uh, in, in, in a nice, bit. nothing wrong with some of that stuff. But I'm telling you, we learn to look up. Learn to look up. Learn to look up. Mama and Daddy both get down, hold hands, and say, Lord, we look to you for help. We can't do this ourselves. We need help. Ladies and gentlemen, we ought to look up for our family. By the way, your children, your kids that you send to school every day, you cannot watch them 24 hours a day. You can't. Even, and if you work a job, if you have the luxury of homeschooling them or something like that, and you're one of the elites and all that, you still can't protect them from every single thing they see and hear and get around out there in that world. You know what you need to do? All you mamas in here and daddies, you learn how to look up for your kids. You learn how to look up for your kids. Them three girls sitting over there this morning, I prayed for them every day of their life. I mean, even before they was born, I, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I beg God every morning, I beg God, I, God, please, tell, God, take care of them. God, please don't let nothing happen to them. God, please watch over them. Lord, if they do something wrong, you can smack them. That's fine, they need it. But Lord, please have mercy and go easy on them. Please, God, watch over them, take care of them. And listen, I, I heard this testimony. And this testimony was by ex a witch and Satanist, and these people went into schoolyards and abducted children. She said, I was a part of a group that abducted kids from playgrounds before I got saved. She said, we'd take a van in there. We'd take a van into a schoolyard. A bunch of little kids coming out after school. We'd say, hey, our honey, want some candy? And the kid come over, sure. And they'd lure them into the van and kidnap them. And she said, I didn't realize it then, but there was this one group of kids we couldn't ever get near. She said, we couldn't get near them. And she said, after I got saved and I met these people, I realized, she said, every time we tried to get one, a cop would drive up. Or something would happen over here. Or the principal would step out. Or so it just never would work out. And she said, those were the children of Bible believing Christian people. And some mama, you may think there's nothing to this, but some mama at home was on her knees saying, God, take care of my baby boy, my girl at school. And God put his hand on them, protected them. We need to learn to look up for our family. Amen? Build a wall of prayer around them. Husbands and wives, Lord have mercy, I'd I've never done, seen so much marriage counseling and marriage couples and books on marriage. Good Lord, and it's getting worse every day. And one one God preacher said, he said, I can't argue with my wife. She wants to fuss all the time. He said, arguing with a woman is like trying to baptize a cat. <laughs> That's a mighty good illustration. Say amen right there. Now, some of y'all say that, some of you ladies say, oh my goodness, there he is fussing at the wind. Listen, I know it's men and women's fault. Men are selfish. Unless God gets a hold of a man's heart, he's all about himself. Ain't that right, ladies? Say amen. You better, you're, it's gonna be the other way in a minute. You better hurry. Ladies, if he, if he ain't right with God, he's like old number one. That's all that matters. Heard about that one guy, this. they won a trip to Hawaii for two and he went twice. That's men for you. That's the way a man will do. Amen? Heard about that guy? I love this story. He said this guy's out. He said he played golf every Monday. I'm telling you, it didn't matter. Come hell or high water, snow, blizzard, rain. He played golf every Monday. Nothing was going to stop him. And he's out there with his buddy one day on Monday morning playing golf. And well, they was out there and there's on the golf course like that. And, uh, a funeral procession come up the road and, he, and the guy... He just stopped and took his hat off like that and everything. He said, my goodness, man, that's awful respectful of you. That's all, I'm, I'm impressed. He said, well, we was married 25 years. 
Now, some of you men need to let that soak in for a minute. You gonna do what you gonna do, it don't matter, right? You're gonna do what you're gonna do if the whole blessed family has to put up with it. You have to run the show. Everybody bows down to you. Yeah, you love that scripture, don't you? And you're just as backslid and wicked as, as, as the devil himself on some of this stuff. Amen? Well, the Bible says, yeah, it says a lot of other stuff too. The Bible says some other stuff. Amen? What I heard about this one, I'll tell you the story, I ain't got time to tell you all these stories. This woman, you've heard me tell this before, uh, preacher, true story, preacher went and visited this woman in the house and they went in and she said, now, come on in here, preacher. Have to take your shoes off. They had this white carpet in this one room in the house, which, you know, if you got white carpet, that's your bit, it's pretty. Why anybody would put white on the floor is a mystery to me. I guess for looks. But she said, nobody can walk on this floor. Nobody. Which makes me think, why would you have a floor that you can't walk on? It's like having a car you can't drive. Can't drive out. Well, sell that piece of junk, you know. Yeah. That's like having, that's like having, ch- say, we can't use them dishes. Okay, take them to the flea market. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you want a dish you can't eat out of? But anyway, she said, we can't eat off, we can't walk on this floor. Everybody has to take their shoes off. You're not allowed to step on that floor. She was sitting there trying to impress the preacher. About that time, little foo-foo comes running in. Little foo-foo is about that big. His body's about that big and he's all hair. Like a wet rat when it gets wet in the rain. And Foo-Foo comes running there and just squats right on that white carpet and goes to the bathroom. And when he does, the preacher went, oh boy. And mama gets up and, hey, baby, mean baby. Don't do that, baby. And what? listen. You get mad at me, whatever you want to say. Bro. If, if you will kiss a dog, if you kiss a dog in the mouth, you are a nasty woman. I mean, you can get mad if you want to. I mean, I, I mean, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with anybody, man or woman, that'll kiss a dog in the mouth. I know women who kiss their dog and won't kiss their husbands. Preach it, brother, Amen. Listen, I ain't kissing no dog. I've never kissed a dog. I ain't going to kiss a dog. That's nasty. You say not little foo-foo. Put little foo-foo down and watch where he'll put his mouth. You think he ain't nasty? You know what a dog will do? A dog will eat his own puke. That sure will. If you want to eat dog, kiss dog puke, I mean, that's your business. Nasty. She said, baby, 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 mommy, get it up. About five minutes later, her husband comes in. He comes and says, hey, preacher, get those shoes off that carpet! And cuts his throat and blesses him out. I'm telling you, there's something wrong with that picture. There's something wrong with it. It's it's bad when we treat our pets better than we do the person we're married to. Come on, preacher, say amen. Amen. Better look up for our family. And then lastly, we need to look up for our future. We need to look up for our future. What's the future of the world? What's the future of these little boys and girls in here this morning? Really, what's your future? You want me to tell you your future? If there's no God, no Bible, no heaven or hell, here's your future. You're going to get older and older and uglier and uglier and get sick and die. That's your future. You're going to a rest home. You might look up and get killed quick. And that's your future, buddy. How's that for, how's that for good news? That's your future. Go to the rest home over there and look, that's you in a few years. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, there is, in, in the, they're working day and night. They're trying to find a cure for this. They're trying to find a cure for cancer. They ain't done it yet. The death rate is 100%. 100%. You say, well, they're working in laboratories and they're trying to figure out a cure for this, their cure for cancer and a cure for AIDS. Well, something else is going to get you. 
If they found a cure for cancer today, something else is going to get you. It's a point that a man wants to die. Listen, I'm, you know what I'm, when you say, well, aren't you looking forward to the future when your grandkids will have a great, wonderful world to live in? No. You know what I'm looking up for the future? I'm looking up. I'm looking up. Our future's up that way, y'all. It ain't down here. There's more fussing and fighting and arguing and war going on today than there ever has been before. The world is more uncertain. The world has less peace. There's more drugs. There's more crime than there's ever been before. But I tell you, I'm looking that way for our help for the future. It's a blessed hope. We're not looking for the undertaker. We're looking for the upper taker. I ain't looking for a hole in the ground, looking for a hole in the sky. I ain't looking for the clods, I'm looking for the clouds. And the Lord coming back. We ought to look up for our future. They say, here's the here's their plan, best plan they've got if you're rich enough. That leaves out over six billion people. If you're rich enough for a large fee, it used to be, uh, I think, uh, $40,000 or something like that. When you die, they'll take you straight down there to wherever and freeze you, quick freeze your whole body, freeze it before it starts decaying and they're going to put you in a capsule for real and put you, and shoot you up in outer space and let it just orbit up there where there ain't no atmosphere and stuff and it don't decay and get old. And then in the year 2068, when they figure out how to fix whatever killed you, they'll bring you back down here and thaw you out and put a new heart in you, new brain, fix you, and you'll be as good as gold. That's the few, That's all the future hope they got. <laughs> you know, you think about that and you think, who in the world would want to come back down here in 2068? Can you imagine? Or you wouldn't even recognize the place for them. There's a bunch of robots running it. Half man, half demon. And what makes you think they're, you know, in the year 20, ah, oh, he'll never know the difference. Leave him up there. We got, <laughs> we got too many people down here. I ain't bringing them down here and thawing him out. That's all the hope the world has. And they talk about us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have hope for our future. We have a hope. Jesus said, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be always. Hallelujah. 318 verses in the New Testament tell us he's coming back. You know, they say that uh, when there's gonna be a war, when there's gonna be a war like the, the uh, heads of leaders, somehow know they talk, I don't see how they can do that, but the leaders of talk say, look, we're getting ready to have war against that country over there. You know what they'll do first? They'll go in there and call out their ambassadors. Like if you have an ambassador to the United States and we're going to Iraq or somewhere, wherever they are, they say, we're getting ready to bomb that country. Go tell our ambassadors to get out of there. And they call the ambassadors out before they declare war on that country. And one of these days, the Lord's going to mess this place up, buddy. He's going to put all the plagues of Egypt on this old world. But before he does, his ambassadors, us, will be called out before the big war begins. He's going to call us out. That's our hope. I'm looking up for my future. I don't know about you this morning. Listen, we stay here as long as we've got to stay. We make a good living. We pay our bills. We take care of our kids. We take care of the grandkids. We do. But I'm telling you, our future is that way y'all it's that way it's up it's up it's up when Jesus comes back and gets us out of here we're in the generation that won't look up I got to thinking there are 90, 90 something thousand people in Burke County I would guess I would guess there's 60,000 people in Burke County sitting at home this morning I'd guess maybe more I doubt if there's 30,000 in church I doubt it. For 350 million people in the United States, there's probably 300 million people in the United States sitting at home this morning watching TV or sleeping or, play, or coming off a drunk. They ain't looking up. They ain't looking up. They ain't looking up. We're in a generation that won't look up. We think, ah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. God ain't helping us. I'm glad there's still some people that say, I'm going to look to the hills. I know where my help comes from. Do you need help this morning? They're coming to get us a song. Do you need help? If you need help, it ain't in a liquor bottle. Your help ain't in a needle or a joint. 
Your help ain't in another partner or another relationship. Your help is in the Lord. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Our heads are bowed. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Nobody's talking, nobody's moving. Would you come this morning while she plays softly? Get down on your knees right here this morning and say, Lord, I'm looking up. I'm looking up. Would you do that? Would you do that? Something's coming already. Something's coming already. Lord, I've got problems and I'm looking up for my finances, for my future, for my family, for my food, for my fortune. I'm looking up. I'm looking up for my marriage. I'm looking up for my kids. I'm looking up. Father, do what ought to be done right now. I pray you touch that one that needs to come. Lord, save that one which is lost. Lord, help us to look to you from whence cometh our help. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing. Have thine own way, Lord. You look to the Lord this morning. Come on. Come on. Help your marriage. Help your children. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank God that's good. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I Lady. Yielded and stayed. Hey, come and look up. Look up. Look Have up. Thine own way, That's where your help comes from. Lord. Look up. Have thine look own to the Lord. Way. Sing now. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now. You let the Lord help you this morning. As in the presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You let the Lord have his way. Hold o'er my being. You let the Lord have his way. Absolute sway. Amen. 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 Filled with thy spirit.